Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be 5 minutes. Today in the news, over the last few days there's been a bunch of talk about the Spider-Man game that just came out on PC. You know the one originally on PlayStation? Well, leave it to PC users to dig up all sorts of hidden stuff that certainly has my interest peaked. First, earlier this week, we learned that files data mined from the PC port of Marvel Spider-Man were hinting at a co-op mode with Peter and Miles. And yeah, with what we know of the sequel, you're definitely gonna be able to play as both of them, but now we have that it was potentially gonna be the case all along, except it was cut from the first game. Over on Screen Rant, they reveal that modder Dinway Tamp? Dinway Tamp? DNI, we tamp, uh, whatever, found that the PC version's code contained messages like Peter Parker is the superior Spider-Man and Miles Morales is the superior Spider-Man, hinting that two players could compete to become the better superhero. There is also code for a Miles Morales player model and another line explicitly mentions co-op play. So I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. But wait, there's more. On Video Games Chronicle, they've verified files that reference a PlayStation PC launcher, similar to something like Ubisoft, EA, Steam, Battle.net, etc. And this is pretty interesting because it follows on the heels of Sony announcing its network will be integrated into PC game releases. And while Spider-Man on PC currently doesn't have that feature. There are multiple references to PSN account linked and PSN linking entitlements within the files. It's possible that these references could suggest a bespoke version of the PlayStation Store that could come on PC. This, coupled with the references to account integration, could eventually lead to cross-purchasing for titles on PS5 and PC, the site goes on to say. And the reason I put any stock in this is because it does kind of fit the trend with what they're trying to do and just gaming culture as a whole as more and more console exclusives are coming to PC. Especially since PlayStation said they're gonna bring a whole slate of games to PC in the past. And while I know the idea of data farming and looking up secret files within games is a mixed bag sometimes and it sometimes ruins the fun of a game, I think in this case, with this kind of information, it's pretty cool and I am all for people digging in and finding out what may be in the future of games like this. So I guess we'll see. In other news, let's take a trip to the world of survival horror. Alone in the Dark, a game that I have not thought about for some time. The 90s and mid 2000s era games about being trapped in a creepy mansion and dealing with supernatural badness inspired by Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft and spawned many a sequel, but to be honest, they kept getting worse and worse over time, so that's probably why it fell off my radar. Until now! Back in 2018, THQ bought the rights from Atari, and now we finally know what they've been up to. Leave it to me to be out of town when the trailer drops, because it looks like we're getting a fully realized, extra creepy reimagining of the franchise. The reboot, while it appears to be still featuring the characters of Emily and Edward from the original, will retell the story in a more modern style. And yes, it does look like they're gonna be stuck in a creepy home trying to solve a mystery, dealing with strange residents, dangerous monsters, portals to nightmarish worlds, and evil in a Lovecraftian tinged deep south in the 1920s US, and frankly, I'm totally here for that. You'll be able to play as either Emily or Edward with completely different cutscenes and levels for each, combat and puzzle solving, will form the backbone of the gameplay which unfolds across a deeply psychological story that goes beyond the realms of the imaginable. Which at this point, admittedly, in the world of psychological horror gaming, isn't really new ground to tread on anymore. It is gonna be interesting because their writer does have some experience with this stuff. According to PC Gamer, the story is written by the same writer who did Amnesia, The Dark Descent, and Soma. One game I absolutely loved, one game I thought was a little too ham-fisted, but both good games. So I'm actually very curious what kind of ground they're gonna tread here because it could be something akin to like Lovecraft Country. I don't know, but I feel like, you know, new stories are always welcome and I'm hoping it's one of those, but I guess we will all find out when we get creeped by its release. But like, it's pretty neat they're bringing this one back. Speaking of bringing it back, that's right, that's where we're going with this. Bring yourself back <laughs> to youtube.com slash coxclips where you can see all sorts of VODs and you can see shorts and all sorts of nonsense. I would love it if you would go and subscribe. Anyway, that's it for the show. Thanks so much. We'll see you all tomorrow for another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News.